OK, so the next kind of problems we may be interested in solving are to minimize this norm, the Euclidean norm between uh, Euclidean norm of AX minus B over some subset of R to the N, not over not the unconstrained problem over all possible X's. So for example, you may want to solve for the minimum X AX minus B L2 subject to norm X2 equals one. This is called least squares minimization over a sphere. OK, so before we look at uh, this particular problem or problems of this kind, or it could be, for example, norm X2 less than or equal to alpha. So this is like looking among points within within a certain sphere. So instead of before looking at this this particular problem, let's look at <coughs> least squares problems with a quadratic inequality constraint. So this the general form of such a problem is given like this. Minimize the L2 norm of AX minus B subject to the L2 norm of BX minus D is less than or equal to some value alpha. So here A as usual is of size M by N, B as usual is of length M. And this capital B matrix here is of size P cross N and D is of size um, is of length P. And alpha is something which is greater than or equal to zero. So clearly if alpha is less than zero, I'm asking that some norm should be less than or equal to a negative number, which is never possible. So there won't be any solution. So this problem is meaningful only if I set, if I use some threshold, I mean, if I, if, if the bound on BX minus D2 is less than or equal to some positive, at least non-negative number alpha. Now, in order to solve this problem, we need one more result, which is called the generalized SVD theorem. Um, and again, I don't have time to, to prove this theorem for you, but this is the result. So we'll just utilize this result to find the solution to that problem. So if you are given two matrices, A, which is of size M by N, M greater than or equal to N, B, which is of size P cross N, then you can find two orthonormal matrices, U of size M by M and B of size P cross P and an invertible matrix X of size N cross N such that U transpose A X is a matrix D A, which is a diagonal matrix containing alpha one to alpha N and V transpose B X is D B, which is a diagonal matrix containing beta one through beta Q and here um, uh, Q is equal to the min of PN. So um, yeah, Q is the min of PN, okay? And both U and V are orthonormal matrices. Okay, so this is the theorem which uh, we are going to utilize. Okay, so for now it's just uh, some notation, but then the point is that this X here is invertible. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So if, uh, so using this theorem, I can write AX minus B L2 norm to be um, I can pre-multiply by U transpose and I can insert an X, X inverse here. So I get U transpose A, X, X inverse times small X minus U transpose B L2 norm and U transpose A, X is this matrix D, A, which has uh, entries alpha 1 to alpha N on the diagonal and U transpose B I'll define to be B tilde and uh, this X inverse times small X I'll define it to be Y. So I'm just doing a variable transformation here. And similarly, I can write BX minus D to be DB times Y minus D tilde. So I'm pre-multiplying by V transpose. And so D tilde is V transpose times small d. And DB is this matrix diag of beta one through beta Q. So with this, the uh, our objective function or the optimization problem, it becomes d, uh, minimize d a y minus b tilde l2 norm squared subject to d b y minus d tilde 
L2 norm squared less than or equal to alpha square. But since dA and dB are both diagonal matrices, I can easily expand this out and write it as the summation I going from 1 to N, alpha I, alpha I Y I minus B I tilde square. And for the remaining entry, I equal to N plus 1 to M, the Y I doesn't touch those entries. So I'll just, so, um, so this term is equal to zero. And so I'm just left with B I tilde square. And similarly here, I'll have beta I Y I minus D I tilde squared. And what I've done here is to take the upper limit to be equal to R, where R is the rank of this matrix B. And the, so that these beta one through beta R are, are, are always non-zero. So um, if R is the rank of B, beta R plus one through beta Q are always equal to zero. And so for those terms, this term is zero. And so I have I equal to R plus one through P, D I tilde square less than or equal to alpha square. This is my constraint. So this problem looks a little bit easier, but we still uh, have to do some work in order to solve this. Okay, now, first of all, notice that no matter what Y I choose, this dBY minus D tilde L2 norm squared is always at least equal to this term, sigma I equal to R plus one to P. Okay, uh, uh, the internet was working beautifully till now. I don't know. Uh, today I'm having some trouble with my internet. Oh well, so let's continue. Um, I was just saying that uh, we we reduce the problem to this one where we want to minimize DAY minus B tilde square, which is actually diagonal matrices. So I can actually expand it out and write it out subject to DBY minus D tilde square which again expanded and written out is like this, less than or equal to alpha square. Now, no matter what yi I choose, this uh, the this cost function or this, this part here is at least equal to the second term here because this is non-negative and this is non-negative. And so if this itself is bigger than alpha squared, then there is no solution. Now, if these two are exactly equal, then we have no choice but to make these two equal. So that we, means we must choose beta i y i equals d i tilde for i equal to 1 to r, or we should choose y i equal to d i tilde divided by beta i for i equal to 1 to r. And we can let alpha i y i equal to b i tilde for i equal to r plus 1 to n because we want to try to minimize this cost here. And uh, we can do that if alpha is not equal to 0. But if alpha itself equals zero, we don't really, we, again, we can't really affect this cost by, by choosing any yi. So we might as well choose yi equals zero. So this is the solution when summation i equal to r plus one to p, di tilde squared is exactly equal to alpha square. It's yi is equal to di tilde over beta i for i going from one to r and bi tilde over alpha i for i equal to r plus one to n, but alpha i not equal to zero and zero for the other cases. So we were able to solve it in, in this case. And so one, two, the next case is if i equal to one to, uh, I, I equal to r plus one to p d i tilde squared less than alpha square. In this case, we have more options to pursue because there is some leg room over here. There are, there, you can possibly choose different yi's, which all of which will satisfy this inequality constraint. So, uh, so for this case, what we'll do is we'll follow kind of the opposite approach. Okay, so we'll follow the opposite approach. That is, we'll solve the unconstrained problem first. Just minimize ax minus b square, and we'll check whether that satisfies the constraint, which is that db times uh, y minus d tilde l2 norm squared less than or equal to alpha squared. Okay, if it satisfies that constraint, then we are done. If it doesn't satisfy the constraint, then we'll have to do some more work. Now, if I look at da y minus b tilde square, that is minimized simply by choosing b i tilde uh, y i to be equal to b i tilde over alpha i for all the y alpha i's which are non-zero, but if alpha I equals zero, I know that I don't care what y i I choose, so I might as well choose it to minimize uh, the constraint part, which is d i tilde over beta i, 
this is true for i equal to 1 to r and otherwise if alpha i equals 0 and it is beyond r i is r plus 1 to n then i can arbitrarily choose y i equals 0 okay so as far as the cost function is concerned if alpha i equals 0 i can choose y i arbitrarily so for i equal to 1 to r i'll choose y i to be d i tilde over beta i to minimize the constraint as much as possible so with this solution um, we check whether this with this y we check whether d b y minus d tilde square is less than alpha square if it is true if if so then we are done but if not which is this condition here so this is just d b times y minus d tilde square and these are the other terms of y which do not affect that constraint part so if this itself is greater than alpha square then the unconstrained solution is not feasible so we need to actually do some more work here now so here actually there is an, another term if i look at this just for clarity if i look at d b y minus d tilde square then there will be three terms there will be a term like this alpha i not equal to 0 i equal to 1 to r and then there will be a term sigma alpha i equal to 0 and i going from 1 to r of beta i but in this case i'm going to choose the y i to be d i tilde over beta i minus d i tilde square that is this part here second case alpha i equals 0 and i going from 1 to r so if alpha i equals 0 this is the y but then you see that these cancel and this is equal to 0 so that term i am not writing here and, but if this is greater than alpha square then the unconstrained solution is not not feasible so the constraint is active and uh, in this case this is a small exercise you have to show this the solution actually occurs at its boundary that is the solution will occur when this constraint is met with equality the way you show this is that if you are able to find a solution such that this this summation this part here di dby minus d tilde square is less than alpha square then you will be able to find a solution a better solution that is you can you it means you have some headroom which you can utilize to further reduce the original cost which is day minus b tilde l2 norm square so the solution occurs at the boundary so which means that we need to solve this problem minimize day minus b tilde square subject to dby minus d tilde square is equal to alpha square so we can utilize the method of lagrange multipliers where we we we, we write write the lagrangian function l of lambda y to be d a y minus b tilde l2 norm square plus lambda times d b y minus d tilde square minus alpha square once again differentiating this with respect to y we just get d a y minus b tilde transpose times d a this is again vector derivatives and uh, these are actually very like, like one or the, the very first or second result you will see if you start if you look up vector derivatives it's very easy it works similar to scalar derivatives, but you have to keep track of these transposes that show up when you take vector derivatives. So it's something like a square. If I differentiate x squared, I'll get 2x. And I'm dropping the 2 part here and writing it as um, just x. So if I differentiate um, a x, the whole squared, I'll just get 2 a uh, squared times x. So that is the da times da type of term that's coming up. Okay, so okay, so coming back to this, this is da y minus b tilde transpose times da plus lambda times dby minus d tilde transpose times db. If I just take the transpose of this, I get da transpose dy minus b tilde plus lambda db transpose times 
dBy minus dt del. Lambda is just a scalar here, it's the Lagrange multiplier factor. So combining the terms that involve y, I'll get dA transpose dA plus lambda dB transpose dB times y is equal to, I'm taking these two terms to the other side, I'll get dA transpose B tilde plus lambda dB transpose D tilde. So <clears throat> now this is these are just diagonal matrices, okay? And uh, um, let's assume that this is non-singular. In fact, the singular case is also easy to handle. The other thing is you, you note that this lambda here is actually a parameter. So I can choose lambda to be different values and try to make this non-singular. Um, if in spite of choosing different lambdas, if this is singular, then you will have to handle that separately. But for the moment, let's assume that this matrix is non-singular. In that case, I can just directly write out what yi of lambda is. This is just a diagonal matrix. It's just the di diagonal entry of this, which is alpha i times the ith entry of this is alpha i, b i tilde, plus the ith entry of this is beta i times d i tilde, divided by the ith entry of this is alpha i square, and the ith entry of this is lambda beta i square. And this is true for i going from 1 to r. Beyond i equal to r, the beta i's are equal to 0. So I'm just left with b i tilde divided by alpha i. So i equal to r plus 1 to n. So, um, and uh, how do I find this lambda? I, I, I need to solve for the lambda which satisfies the constraint. db times y of lambda minus d tilde squared is equal to alpha squared. So if I write, if I just expand this out and call this function phi of lambda, I'll just get i equal to 1 to r beta i times y i of lambda, this question, this quantity here, minus d i tilde square plus i equal to r plus 1 to p. Uh, for those terms, this y of lambda will multiply 0 and so I'm just left with uh, d i tilde squared is equal to alpha squared. And if I take this alpha i squared plus lambda beta squared common between these two terms, and in the numerator, I'll get alpha i beta i times b i tilde plus lambda beta i square, because this is beta i here, times d i tilde minus d i tilde times this denominator, which is alpha i squared d i tilde plus lambda beta i squared d i tilde. These two, of course, cancel. And so what I'm left with is sigma i equal to 1 to r alpha i times um, alpha i is common between these two terms. So I've taken it out. Alpha i times beta i b i tilde minus alpha i d i tilde divided by this quantity, alpha i squared plus lambda beta i squared square plus summation i equal to r plus 1 to p d i tilde squared equal to alpha i, alpha, I, alpha squared. These equations are called, uh, this equation is called the secular equation. Um, the name apart, the point is that lambda is sitting in the denominator here and you have a sum of r terms here. So you can't solve this in closed form. But when I set lambda equal to zero, phi of zero is actually the solution I would have obtained by solving the unconstrained problem. And uh, we know that phi of zero is, I mean, that's why we came to came into all this because phi of zero must be bigger than alpha square. And because lambda is sitting in the denominator here, phi of lambda is actually a monotone decreasing function of lambda. So as I increase lambda, this phi of lambda will keep decreasing. And then at some point, there will be a unique positive lambda star such that phi of lambda star is exactly equal to this alpha square here. But you will need to use some numerical recipe to solve this, this, this equality condition. Okay, so that completes my description of how to solve um, least squares problems with quadratic inequality constraints. Okay, so we just learned how to solve this problem. Okay, and then the, knowing how to solve this is actually very powerful because, so for instance, if you want to perform least squares minimization over a sphere, that is, uh, you can do that by just setting B equal to the identity matrix and D equal to zero. Then it just becomes norm X2 less than or equal to alpha. So you want to minimize the L2 norm error between AX and B subject to norm X less than or equal to alpha. There's also another uh, succinct solution you can obtain by SVD, but I won't discuss that here.
Similarly, if you want to do solve an equality constraint least squares problem, that is minimize uh, AX minus B L2 ROM subject to an equality constraint BX equals D. Then all I have to do is to set alpha equals zero here. So I just set alpha equals zero and I can use the solution developed here to solve it. But there is also another succinct solution via QR that I won't discuss here. So basically this brings me to the end of what I wanted to discuss in this course. Okay, are there any questions? <laughs>